Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, I apply for this debate this evening so that I could outline the adverse impact recent changes to flight paths have had over my constituency. I also want to suggest a number of solutions that I believe should be introduced to mitigate airplane noise impact for my constituents and the constituents of other honourable and right honourable members whose constituencies are close to Heathrow. Mr Deputy Speaker, last year NATS, the National Air Traffic Services, decided to consolidate flight paths to the north of my constituency but failed to notify the communities affected, or indeed Heathrow Airport, or indeed me. In fact, it took a year's worth of complaints from local people for Nats to finally admit they made changes to the so-called Compton route. Their consolidation of the Compton route is supposedly due to safety reasons, although in my opinion Nats have failed to fully explain their decision. So, Minister, I would like to know what the reasons are, and if they are not credible, for, for the Compton route to revert back to how it was previously set. Late last week, Heathrow published their analysis of flight path data over my constituency. They assert things are broadly the same as before and that my constituents and I are misled. However, if you look closely at the published data, you can deduce that Sandhurst and Crowthorne in my constituency have a higher concentration of low-flying aircraft. Indeed, my constituents, such as Miss Claire Simpson living in Crowthorne and Miss Lisa Davison in Sandhurst, are apparently unable to hear themselves speak in their gardens, such as the deluge of low-flying aircraft. This is frankly unacceptable around 15 miles from Heathrow, particularly for residents not previously affected. Of course, I'll give up. I fully support him. There's been a major change. We now have a motorway in the sky with much lower planes, far more insistently. And all we ask is to go back to where we were before the trials. I would totally agree with my honourable friend. Mr Deputy Speaker, Heathrow are very forthcoming about the effect that these changes to the Compton route have had. Indeed, they would like to see the change reversed too. However, what Heathrow failed to acknowledge is that these changes to the Compton route have also pushed arrivals one kilometre downwards to accommodate departures. These are having a huge noise impact, particularly when pilots are using limited thrust on takeoff to save on fuel. If more thrust were used on takeoff, aircraft would be at the highest point of their allocated altitude when over my constituency. I would appreciate the Minister's suggestions on how his department could deliver this change. Of course, I will give one. Uh, I applaud the Honourable Member for having this debate, but the problem for Teddington Action Group is, despite the trials, that actually there are increases in flights, they are more concentrated in the route, they are flying lower, and there are louder aircraft, the A380s. And 11 minutes ago, I got tweets that already tonight there is noise over Teddington. My concern is, regardless of the trials, this cannot be mitigated, and it's already increasing. I, I thank the Honourable Lady for, for her intervention. I would argue you can mitigate. There are different things that I will come to, but I do recognise that the flights and the frequency of the flights has increased. And the type of aircraft is important in terms of where they fly and how high they are in the sky. Of course, dealing with arrivals re will require more action. Mr Deputy Speaker, I was surprised to learn through correspondence with the Minister that Nats only prioritise noise mitigation for flight path designs up to 4,000 feet. The Minister goes on to say in the next sentence of his letter that flight path designs up to 7,000 feet are considered too. Which measure does he favour? 7,000 feet would be better for my constituents. To further deal with noise from arrivals, I would also like to see a clear definition of the continuous descent approach that would require a greater adherence to the three-degree path from 8,000 feet down and not just at 4,000 feet when gnats at Heathrow take over. This would have the effect of raising the height of planes above, the, uh, above my constituency. Of course I will give way. Uh, I, I appreciate very much the, uh, uh, the bringing of this uh, debate from the Honourable Speaker. Uh, my constituency is also uh, significantly affected by noise uh, from Heathrow. Um, but, uh, and I welcome uh, the opportunity to hear th uh, what happens in his constituency when flight paths are changed. Uh, but uh, is he aware, Mr Speaker, that in my constituency there can be no variation for landing paths because all planes are locked in uh, to the landing uh, arrangements at Heathrow uh, and are, uh, for 70 per cent of the time, planes are flying over built-up area all the way from Kew uh, in to, to, to the runway. Uh, I, I thank the Honourable Lady for her intervention. Clearly those constituencies close to the airport mitigating noise becomes difficult. 
I do think that if you glide approach, for example, in an aircraft using engines less, even in your constituency, I think it would be quieter. There are some changes, but I'm realistic to know that those uh, constituencies that are in close proximity to Heathrow are going to be impacted upon to some degree. I'm just arguing that they could be impacted upon less if we give thought, uh, some, some consideration to these suggestions. Of course I will give way. Again, when I ask your permission to, uh, beforehand. Connectivity is so important for the whole of United Kingdom, not just for Heathrow, but for Belfast, for Aldergrove, Belfast City, for Londonderry as well. Uh, the importance of, of, of uh, having those connections uh, and, and the benefit for the economy is great. Uh, at the same time, this, my party and the Democratic Union's party are fully committed to, to the expansion of Heathrow. And I want to put that on record. Uh, but we're also, I believe, Heathrow has shown some methods whereby they can uh, go a long way to addressing the issues of noise along, along with the, the people who live in the area. I think the Honourable Gentleman is going to come to that at some stage. Perhaps maybe we could hear some of his ideas how to reduce the noise in those areas. Well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his intervention. He should know, in fact he does know, that I will be passing through Belfast at City Airport uh, very, uh, soon and I shall be able to admire the country that he, he has the privilege of representing a part of. Um, I would like to see a clear definition of the continuous descent approach that would require a greater adherence to the three degree path from 8,000 feet down and not just at 4,000 feet when Nats at Heathrow take over. This would have the effect of raising the height of planes above the constituency. Planes are noisiest when there is a faster level of negative vertical speed. Furthermore, I have concerns about arrivals that have been not been stacked or are coming out of the Ockham or Biggins stack at 8,000 feet and are having to descend to around 4,000 feet for their final approach. If NATS were mandated to take noise mitigation seriously, this would become much less of an issue for residents on the ground. Mr Deputy Speaker, another area with scope for improvement is the way certain noisy aircraft are dealt with. Has the Department for Transport considered banning these from taking off or landing from 9.30pm to 7.30am? Also, retrofitting of noise-reducing devices to Airbus A320s are being actively encouraged by Heathrow, but around 20% of A320s operating at Heathrow have yet to have them installed. Will the Department issue guidance on this? One airline operating a few A320s without the retrofit can have a huge noise impact. For old planes, as they get sold on and have a life of 30 years or more, a ban might be the only way to actually get them retired from service. This is particularly applicable to new, low-cost, long-haul carriers. In addition, aircraft manufacturers could do a great deal more. No manufacturer offers streamlining for their landing gears, for example. Manufacturers could also modify their advice for airlines on operating techniques to reduce noise, such as additional use of speed brakes located on the upper side of aircraft, something that, if used instead of flaps, would further reduce noise. I very much hope the Minister is able to bring about a resolution to the problems I've out outlined, at least some of them. It is quite easy, as you can tell, to get bogged down in the detail of this issue, but the best solution most certainly involves a far more robust mandate for Nats or perhaps for the Civil Aviation Authority. Mr Deputy Speaker, I have long been a proponent of Heathrow expansion, primarily based upon the economic benefits it would bring for my constituency of Bracknell, the Thames Valley region and the wider implications for UK's long-term prosperity. Heathrow expansion offers the best prospects for stimulating the local economy by supporting and creating jobs. An expanded Heathrow will also play an important role in the continued economic success of the Thames Valley, ensuring that it retains its position as a hub of innovation, productivity and prosperity. I am determined, however, that current usage of Heathrow Airport and any future expansion should not come at the expense of the health and well-being of local communities. In particular, when Heathrow is on easterly operations, some residents in the Thames Valley can be blighted by aircraft noise for up to 19 hours a day. This has happened a lot recently. As outlined, if you forgive me, I will progress. As outlined earlier, this situation has been further exacerbated by the changes implemented by NATS, which narrowed the Compton Departure Route Corridor, resulting in more concentration of aircraft activity over densely populated areas in my constituency. Over the last year, Mr Deputy Speaker, I've held regular meetings with Heathrow executives, held a public constituency meeting following NATS flight trials, made representations to Heathrow Airport Limited, to NATS and the Civil Aviation Authority. During this time, it has become clear to me that much more attention needs to be paid to the mitigation of noise 
and that a relevant body should be made statutorily responsible for its reduction. NATs who control the airspace around Heathrow currently have no responsibility for mitigating aircraft noise that could affect hundreds of thousands of people. As I have said, there are many issues at play here, including old aircraft, poor piloting, but NATs could do the most in the short term to alleviate this issue, particularly around Heathrow, where they vector the aircraft much too far from the airport, which subjects many more communities than necessary to excessive noise. As I have now outlined, there are solutions to mitigating noise around Heathrow. The Government should seriously consider them, as I believe that the UK's future as a trading nation and tourist destination depends on our ability to meet the increasing demand for airport capacity. For the good of the country, we have to move forward and build the airport capacity that Britain needs. Over the coming years, I will continue to campaign on behalf of my constituency to ensure that Heathrow can increase its capacity. But rest assured, I will also campaign vigorously to mitigate excessive noise impact on my constituents' lives. John Holmes.